welcome to my fourth light tank model kit for the Second World War. This is a Fiat 3000 Model 21, which I think it means it was designed in 1921. The idea behind this series is that I'm looking at light tanks that were all designed and all built before World War II, but actually saw some active service in the Second World War. And it's the turn of the Italians now. So like all the other kits, this is a 135 scale model kit. I have to say that the cover art in this case is quite bad, really. It's not very good painting at all. I don't know why they've got the turret facing us head on. It looks a bit odd, to be honest with you. But there we go. Let's have a closer look. Uh, one model kit, no cement, not recommended for under eight years of age. And this is a, um, what is it? A Toro model kit made in Italy. And this is the first Toro kit I've ever encountered. So this will be quite interesting. We look at the side. We've got some art for another kit. This is a uh, Tottenkopf, which I think is a First World War German tank. And we've got a little cross section of the tank there. Nothing much to say here. I've got the cover art again. Uh, Fiat Toro. This is quite nice though. This is basically a cross section and I suppose a side section through the tank showing the, the driver and the machine gunner there. And then we've got a few details about the tank on the right hand side. Uh, some spelling mistakes that I noticed. And that's it. That's all on the outside. Let's crack on and have a look at the interior. So there we go. Right, the box wasn't sealed, but I haven't seen inside this kit before. Let's tear open this plastic. Shake all this out. Oh, lots of loose bits in here. A little bit odd. Here's the decal set. Just lots of numbers, really. Not sure what to make of that. Well, no doubt the instructions will give us a few ideas. Let's look at these individually, one by one. Um, okay, looking all right, I suppose. We've got some funny bits of extra plastic here. Let's move that out of the way so we can see properly. Um, looking fairly clean. Not much to say about that. Right, is that the top of the sides of the tank? Oh, that must be the top, and that must be the bottom, I suppose. Again, looking okay. Nothing remarkable. Here it gets a bit worse. We've got a lot of flashing around these bits here. Yeah, down on this side here, there's a lot of flashing, a lot of tidying up needed. But really, I mean, most of the parts are pretty good. I will have to say, pretty nice. And then we've got these odd bits and pieces here and I was wondering what these were, <laughs> but they are the tank tracks and they're made out of rubber. And the rubber seems to have perished somewhat. If I try and bend this, oh no, it snaps, so that's not good. Okay, that might be an issue. So we've got two lengths of track and they're quite distorted. Yeah, I don't know how long this kit has been hanging around for. The box looks like it's been out in the sun for a while. I got this off eBay, this kit. And I'm just wondering if this is like bankrupt stock and this kit has been stored in a, a hot warehouse somewhere. I've got these. I don't think they're actually part of the kit. I think these are just extra bits. Got more of the track here. Again, it's looking quite fragile. I'm not sure what to do with that. And there's more in the box itself. Let's pour that out. Yeah, so this might be an issue. Just got lots of little bits of track. Yeah, and this is obviously part of the, um, the injection process here, a bit of waste. Good, well, I say good, it's quite bad, isn't it, really? I don't know why that's at such a funny angle. That is very odd. And the rubber itself feels a little bit sticky like it's decaying. And here's the instructions, and this is <laughs> remarkably cheap paper. <laughs> Let's have a read of this. Right, the Fiat 3000 was a development of paramount importance in the history of the Italian army. Born from the experiences of the First World War, it entered service only after the end of the war and was the first tank produced in quantity for the newly formed tank corps. Following the use of the tanks on the Western Front, 
Italian headquarters decided to test this new and interesting means of war. Italy purchased from France two Schneider and three FT-17 tanks. After long trials, it was decided to produce the Renault FT-17 because of its good cross-country performance. Fiat modified the original project, placing the engine crosswise, the hull and augmenting the armour and the armament. This first series represented in the actual model entered service in 1921 and was followed in 1930 by a second series with some improvements and armed with a 37mm gun. In the second half of the 30s, the remaining tanks were improved and modernised. The last operational Fiat 3000 tanks were used at the beginning of the Second World War. The last few were destroyed in Sicily during 1943, and I think that's during the invasion of Sicily. I seem to remember some story about some last stand by some Italian tanks against the Americans. All the other instructions are in other languages. Wow, these are pretty thin instructions, I have to say. You've got the usual plans here. All right, from this I can gather that the tracks shouldn't have broken up. They should just be one set. And here are the instructions themselves. So we've got four sets of instructions. We've got the Italian at the top. We've got uh, English, uh, French, and then German at the bottom with some fairly simple illustrations. This is quite a big difference from the last tank I made, my um, my French tank, my Renault R35, which had very, very detailed instructions. A lot of parts in there. Yeah, very, very thin on the, old, uh, on the old instructions. Got a painting scheme here, and also a scheme for the decals. There is not much information about the actual camouflage used on the Fiat 3000. From the black-white photographs and the few documents available, it is possible to suppose the right colours. <laughs> First period, totally dark green, probably semi-gloss. Second period, big patches in ochre, dark yellow, dark green and dark brown with hard edges. The exact colour patterns appear to differ from one tank to another, so there wasn't much uniformity. There are no photographs existing which show both sides of the same tank. Third period, totally dark grey-green of different shades of that of the first period. Fourth period, little patches of the same colours of the second period. We thanks in advance everyone who will be able to furnish us with more and detailed informations. Okay. And there we go, we've got some more colour schemes there. Right. Well, that's it. Like I said, very, very thin instructions. There's only these two pages actually showing you the assembly. The rest is like painting tips. Right. Well, this will be the first tank I make in my new scheme. And by new scheme, I mean that previously, when I made my, my previous three model kits, I was actually painting things and then sticking them together. So I was painting the individual parts. But most of the better model makers tend to make the whole thing and then paint it afterwards. That's what I'll be doing. So the next time you see this, I will have made the uh, basic tank and sprayed it with primer. And then we're looking about sort of weathering it up and making it look interesting. So I'm quite looking forward to that. Hello, and here's a little interim video on my Fiat 3000. So I've been assembling the, the main parts of the tank and put some primer on them. I've been spraying them up with my new airbrush. But uh, anyway, here's the main hull of the tank. It's all been airbrushed in black primer. I'm fairly pleased with it. This is quite interesting here. That's where the starting handle for the engine would go if you wanted to actually start it from the outside manually. Quite good. And we've got the various wheel attachments at the bottom. And these will eventually fit here. So that's the lower wheel set and then at the top it goes in there and that's more or less how it will all fit together and then obviously the track will go all the way around and I've got a couple of large wheels here one there that's a spindle that drives the whole thing and there's another wheel in the front but uh, yeah working pretty good I think I've had a few problems making this though like that's one of the the front wheels and this is a rear spindle wheel. This is looking a little bit ragged. If you look carefully, you can see little bits and pieces on it. And this is because, whereas the front um, piece, this is made of two pieces, the front and the back. And the front piece had individual spokes. 
but the back piece is just a solid plate. So what I've done, I've sort of drilled holes through and then ground out these spaces between the spokes. And it's, it's looking a bit rough. There's little bits and pieces you can see here and there. Uh, other stuff here. This is quite fun. This is the bit at the back. And this will fit on roughly about, uh, where is it? Roughly about there. And this is called a, a tank tail. And this was, um, this allowed, this curved plate allowed the, the tank to like cross ditches or trenches that were perhaps uh, a little bit too wide than, than otherwise. So if it was only that long, it would be a bit limited in the uh, width of trenches it could actually navigate. But with that on the end, it sort of gave you a few more feet. And these things on the back, I was puzzling over these for a little while, but they're actually jacks. If you see here, they've got handles attached to on the inside. And you could take these off and use them to sort of jack up bits of the tank. Presumably help rescue it if it got stuck in a trench somewhere. So it's all quite handy. Um, yeah, the track is proving a bit of a problem though. This is very brittle. And what I've done, I've been sort of coating or slathering the back and the front here and there with bits of uh, rubber cement, trying to just keep it together. Otherwise this would just snap into pieces. So I'm going to have to be quite careful when I actually stick all these bits together. That's a bit of a disappointment. Um, other disappointments, um, this is probably the worst kit I've made in, in terms of quality, I have to say. For example, you get this dimpling on quite a few parts, and this is due either to the, the plastic not drying properly when it's being um, injected, or not enough plastic being injected in the first place. And there's been a few places where that's happened. And what I've tried to do is like um, fill in holes here and there. There's a lot of dimpling here, here. Uh, on the back as well. So that's a bit of an issue. But otherwise, um, I'm fairly pleased. Yeah, the primer I've been using, again, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, I'll put the name on the screen. And I've just used um, a Tamiya acrylic thinner with that. So the next step is to actually assemble all these parts, get all these together, and then start painting it up in its proper proper camouflage colours, which I haven't actually decided on yet. So anyway, there we go, there's my progress so far. And the next time you see it, it'll be painted up a little bit more. Hello, and welcome back to the Fiat 3000 build. And here she is. This is the little tank all painted up, and camouflaged and dusted and weathered, and not looking too bad, I don't think. Um, yeah, I quite like this little tank. <laughs> it's cute, isn't it? It's tiny, but it's a cute little tank. Um, a few problems, the biggest problem being this, the fact that there is actually not enough track to go around the whole thing. And I promise you, I didn't lose any track. All the bits of track were preserved and kept. I came across another YouTube video where someone was making the same kit and they had exactly the same problem. And the track was too short. And their, well, their theory is that the track had actually shrunk um, which I can believe. I mean, th this this track was in a quite a bad state, as you saw earlier. And I, I, you know, it's not beyond the bounds of belief that it actually shrunk to the extent that you know this was lost. Certainly, there's no other reasonable explanation for that. Um, another slight disappointment is the fact that they don't actually give you enough decals to actually um, decorate these properly. If you look on the instructions and on the cover art, then you see a number on the side, see a number on the front. And then you see the same number on the other side, except they don't actually give you enough combinations to create three sets of these numbers. So I've got 313 on that side and the front, and I had to create something new, well, 222 on the side, which is a little bit disappointing. When I put the decals on, they were looking quite nice, but I put on this setting solution just to improve them if I could, and the setting solution essentially um, melts the decals and then when they dry out they sort of shrink back and they're meant to sort of press down sort of hard on the surface become more integrated and look better. Unfortunately the decals which had been quite flat initially were slightly melted by the solution and bubbled up. 
in quite an alarming way, a noticeable way in fact, I don't know if you can see it here. But what I did when I noticed that was I went back a few days later and put some more of the solution on and it sort of sorted out the problem. But you can still see some bubbling here and there, which is annoying because these actually look slightly worse than they did before I put on the uh, setting solution. A little bit irritating. Now the weathering technique I tried with this tank was the hairspray technique. Um, you saw me put the primer on, but on top of that I sprayed it all over with this quite light colour, um, equating roughly to that there. Then on top of that, I sprayed the whole tank over with hairspray. Then on top of that, I put on this sort of green base layer, and then I put on some extra camouflage, these lighter bits and the darker bits. Then once all that was dry, the idea is that you go back, you wet down a bit of the paint and the water penetrates through the acrylic and it hits the hairspray and the hairspray dissolves. And then you can use like a brush or some other implement to just sort of scrape away the top layers of paint in a way that sort of would mimic normal wear and tear, which is what I did. I used various brushes, I got old toothbrushes, some stiff nylon brushes, even a, um, a wire brush in one instance. But a lot of the weathering I did with a damp toothpick. So you can see a score there that's gone all the way down to the primer. And that worked pretty well. It was a pretty good effect, I think. That was, it was a lot of hard work. I thought this paint would come off quite easily and it didn't at all. <laughs> a lot of hard work. So another technique I used for chipping was to use the sponge method. So you just tear off a bit of sponge, dab that into the paint that you want as like your chipping layer and then make sure that 95% of the paint is actually off the sponge then very really lightly dab it around areas that would normally get some wear. Um, I've done this on this tank but I can't honestly distinguish the bits of sponge chipping from the other chipping I did. It's certainly a lot less hassle using the sponge I must say because as I said before the other method was all like scraping off paint using the uh, the toothpick etc was very labor intensive surprisingly so but aside from the fact that it's slower i think the i think the hairspray method does actually produce a more random pattern which is perhaps a little bit more believable um, especially here around the door you can see it looks a little bit more authentic i think anyway uh, the other thing i did was applied a lot of uh, rust washes onto the wheels here. It's a little OTT at the moment, I suppose. So this is alternating layers of really sort of different rust washes. And there's some dust washes on there as well. Yeah, I've applied dust washes all over the tank, trying to um, concentrate in areas where it would normally collect in like these crevices here, that grill perhaps, and down the bottom. So any horizontal surface like this has been given extra layers because that's where normally dust would accumulate. What I'll have to do with the tracks though, is clean up these risers here. Because these are the parts that would normally be sort of worn clean when the track was moving along. And you can get like, I think a graphite pen to rub across those so it makes it look like sort of polished metal. So apart from rusting up the tracks, I always applied a few rust spots here and there to the tank itself. And at the bottom, uh, I don't know how much difference that makes to be honest with you. But I did it. Yeah, so I'm not sure what more I could do to this little beauty. <laughs> I'm quite pleased with it. I mean, you could spend forever fiddling around with them. So I think it's finished for this one. I think that is going to be the finished result. But anyway, I hope you found all that useful. I hope you'll come back again soon for some more. And until I see you again, I shall say goodbye. <laughs>